<clears throat> Dear people watching and listening, Assalamu alaikum. Kindly like and share this video with your friends and family and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please support my channel by contributing to my Patreon account so that I can continue making the audiobook series. Is the Bible God's Word? Start of Chapter 5 Damning Confessions Mrs. Ellen G. White, a prophetess of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, in her Bible Commentary, Volume 1, page 14, has this confession to make about the affordability of the Holy Bible. The Bible we read today is the work of many copyists who have in most instances done their work with marvelous accuracy. But copyists have not been infallible, and God most evidently has not seen fit to preserve them altogether from error in transcribing. In the following pages of her commentary, Mrs. White testifies further, I saw that God had especially guarded the Bible. From what? Yet when copies of it were few, Learned men had in some instances changed the words, thinking that they were making it plain, when in reality they were mystifying that which was plain, by causing it to lean to their established views, which were governed by tradition. Developed Sickness The mental malady is a cultivated one. This authoress and her followers can still trumpet from rooftops that, truly, the Bible is the infallible word of God. Yes, it is adulterated, but pure. It is human, yet divine. Do words have any meaning in their language? Yes, they have in their courts of law, but not in their theology. They carry a poetic license in their preaching. In their hearts is a disease. And Allah has increased their disease. وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ And grievous is the penalty they incur. بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْذِبُونَ Because they are false to themselves. Holy Qur'an, Surah Baqarah, Chapter 2, Verse 10 The Witnesses The most vociferous of all the Bible thumpers are the Jehovah's Witnesses. On page 5 of their foreword, mentioned earlier, they confess in copying the inspired originals by hand. The element of human frailty entered in, and so none of the thousands of copies extant today in the original language are perfect duplicates. The result is that no two copies are exactly alike. Now you see why the whole foreword of 27 pages is eliminated from their Bibles. Allah was making them to hang themselves with their own erudition. Potluck Out of every 24,000 differing manuscripts the Christians boast about, the Church Fathers just selected four which tallied with their prejudices, their preconceived notions, and called them Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We will deal with each of them in their proper place. Here, let us go over the conclusion of the Jehovah's Witnesses' research, as recorded in the now expunged foreword. The evidence is, therefore, that the original text of the Christian Greek scriptures has been tampered with, the same as the text of the Seventy has been. Yet this incorrigible cult has the effrontery to publish nine million copies as a first edition of a 192-page book entitled is the Bible really the word of God? We are dealing here with a sick mentality, for no amount of tampering, as they say, will appreciably affect the authenticity of the Bible. This is Christian logic. A patient hearing. Dr. Graham Scroggy, in his aforementioned book, pleads on page 29 for the Bible, and let us be perfectly fair as we pursue the subject, is the Bible the word of God? bearing in mind that we are to hear what the Bible has to say about itself. In a court of law, we assume that a witness will speak the truth, 
and must accept what he says unless we have good grounds for suspecting him or can prove him a liar. Surely the Bible should be given the same opportunity to be heard and should receive a like patient hearing. The plea is fair and reasonable. We will do exactly as he asks and let the Bible speak for itself. In the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy, there are more than 700 statements which prove not only that God is not the author of these books, but that even Moses himself had no hand in them. Open these books at random and you will see. And the Lord said unto him, Away, get thee down. And Moses said unto the Lord, The people cannot come. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, And the Lord said unto Moses, Get down, charge the. It is manifest and apparent that these are neither the words of God nor of Moses. They indicate the voice of a third person writing from hearsay. Moses writes his own obituary. Could Moses have been a contributor to his own obituary before his demise? Did the Jews write their own obituaries? So Moses died, and he, God Almighty, buried him, Moses. He was one twenty years old when he died, and there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses. Holy Bible, Deuteronomy, chapter 34, verses 5 to 10. We will analyze the rest of the Old Testament presently from other angles. End of chapter 5